it's a categorical lie, and the sheriff and the county said it's a lie. I don't know why we're worried about these silly issues when we've got people to help, okay? I was the first one to show up in DeSoto and help those people. They were appreciative that we were there. We weren't stopping anything. They had, had distributed a bunch of water and food and whatnot. There was nobody even in line at the time. Uh, so it's a total lie, and uh, it's just dumb. But I, I don't have time for that. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was responding to a reporter who was asking about these allegations that he had interrupted relief efforts following the devastating hurricane, Hurricane Ian, in order to engage in a photo op for a few hours. Now, he, of course, vigorously denied that he had done that. But did he interrupt relief efforts? Well, let me give you the details you could judge for yourselves. The infuriated workers had apparently told ABC Action News that they'd been leading a relief mission for days since Hurricane Ian made landfall last week, but a state trooper made them stop because DeSantis was en route. The trooper allegedly told the workers that his hands were tied. Unfortunately for DeSantis, there was also video that shows he was lying when he was trying to you know, rebut what the reporter was asking him about. Uh, now, it's a local news video and they're pretty vicious with copyright claims. So uh, we can't show you the video, but it's on YouTube. You could watch it for yourselves and we'll explain what it says. In the video picked up by Tampa's local ABC affiliate WFTS, a local assistant principal is captured on video complaining about being kept from recovery and cleanup efforts because of DeSantis's photo op, which goes against the categorical lie allegation by the Florida governor. And I'm I'm curious what you think, Farron. You're based in Florida. Luckily, you know you weren't impacted by uh, Hurricane Ian because of where you're situated in Florida, and I'm I'm really happy about that. But what have you noticed about the local government's response to Hurricane Ian? Um, well, first of all, I wish I would have known that the local news outlets are really bad about when people use their clips because I've got that clip in a video tomorrow. So now I'm worried about that. But <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> no, the 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 local government's response, you know, the the city governments, the county officials, is always pretty good, right? This is one of the few things that we do see here in the state of Florida that brings people together in a, in a way that you know. I don't think most people, if you've never been through a natural disaster, I've been through at least 10 hurricanes in my life. Dude, everybody, everybody comes together. People are you know, helping out elderly neighbors, they're helping out people that they otherwise despise. Trust me, I know we've all done it. So it is great to see that response. And then of course, you end up with the big guys. You get your Ron DeSantis is coming down and his fancy white boots. We've all seen the picture, You know, not a smudge of dirt on them. And they want to make it all about them. He's, you know, in some of the pictures, he's wearing his DeSantis for governor gear and he's making sure his wife has it on too. It is absolutely appalling. And at the same time, they're the ones who want to say that the left is trying to politicize this. You know, Vice President Harris said only send aid to black people. That is not at all what she said, but that's what they're claiming. And then the truly disgusting part, as you said, people, I, I do encourage you, go. Watch that video clip of the local news. There is no question these people were forced to stop working, right? You see them interacting with the people telling them they have to stop. And then Ron DeSantis goes on the air and he tells the state of Florida, what you just saw with your own eyes didn't happen. It's somehow made up. And that is the caliber of people that we're dealing with, not just here in Florida, but all across the country on the Republican side who will look at you dead in the eye. And tell you that what you just saw happen didn't happen. Yep. It's it's a mirage. And I don't know how we fight against that when they're literally telling people deny the reality that you see and only trust my word. That's I mean, nuts. That's been an ongoing issue. <clears throat> and it's infuriating how how often you come across video evidence of what actually transpired and Voters are told, don't believe your lying eyes. And there's some portion that just goes along with it. But I think you're absolutely right in your kind of analysis of what the situation is like on the ground versus, you know, on a higher level with politicians and public figures. I mean, it's just like disaster capitalism, right? Where capitalists love to exploit a disaster for profit. 
Politicians do the same when it comes to these disasters for political power. So I have no doubt that Ron DeSantis is engaging in it. This is his moment to shine. This is his moment to show the country what his leadership looks like. Cuz I have no doubt he's gonna run for president. So I think that's part of it as well. But I wanted to quickly comment on what you said about you know local communities helping one another, even if they disagree with each other politically. Like I feel that. Um, I go to Florida a lot because of my family living there, I have in-laws living there. We were just in Fort Myers last July. And seeing photos and video of the devastation there, I got emotional. And I know that the majority of people living there you know, in the last election voted for Trump. I know I don't agree with them politically, but at the end of the day, they're people and they've just lost everything. That entire community is wiped out. It is so difficult to watch that. And it makes me feel good to know that on just a basic human level, ordinary people are able to put that stuff aside and help each other out. That they haven't completely dehumanized each other. Because if you just pay attention to the news, it really feels like based on political identity, people have dehumanized each other. And that is a scary place to be. It really is. And you know, we, <clears throat> the last hurricane we had come through here was two years ago. And I actually had had hand surgery the day before. So after the storm, we're we're all out there. We're working, trying to clear debris, get stuff off the roads, and you know I'm still going over and I'm I'm helping my my elderly neighbors clear their yard. I've only got one good hand, and it's not even my dominant hand. And I and trust me, these uh, uh, folks that I've been helping, I know from their Facebook posts, like they're Q people. But it mm. didn't matter. Like even mm. though I'm you know one armed guy. I'm gonna help them because they need help. And it was great and it's a good feeling and all the kids in the neighborhood doing it. And those are the kinds of things that really do matter in these situations. What we do not need is people like Ron DeSantis coming down to take their photo ops. It's just like when we had the Deepwater Horizon disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. You know, The governor came here, it was Charlie Crist at the time. That was when he was a Republican still. And he gets his pictures and he's looking out at the Gulf like, mm, mm. like what good does that do? You're, you're watching oil roll in and you're just, hmm, mm, I that's mean, very tough. It's come on, I, it's, I hate it when they do this crap. I know, it's the same line of thinking when you hear the, oh yeah, have you been to the border? Have you done your photo op at the border <laughs> yet? It's like, what is a politician's visit to the border supposed to do? That's not policy, that's not immigration reform, that's not dealing with anything. That's literally just optics. You're pushing for Democrats to go to the border for a photo op just to improve their optics. That's it, that's all it is. Yeah, okay. and, and, and then they'll criticize them when they do that. Like, oh, well, he yeah, just I went know. down there for a picture. But I, I tell you, the, the delicious bit of irony down here is do you know what they're doing? They have started. Taking Venezuelan migrants from New York and sending them down here to Florida to help with the cleanup and recovery efforts. Of course, because of course. We, yeah, because we 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 need the people to help. And and by the way, that is what always happens. You know, after all the hurricanes down here, we do see you'll see busloads of people come in. They will help. They will do tremendous work. They'll they'll clear debris. They'll rebuild roofs and fences and all kinds of stuff. And then they just ship them out when they're done with them. Which is absolutely ridiculous. These people rebuild our entire state, and we treat them like these expendable workers. But yeah, they're they're sending people, <laughs> Venezuelans, just like the ones he sent to Martha's Vineyard. We're now having to bring them all back because suddenly we need them, and we'll cast them aside when we're done. It, it is absolutely that's one of the worst things we see during the storms is how they treat these migrant workers who put our communities back together. Yeah, this country loves to exploit the most vulnerable people. I mean, in California, because of our wildfires, instead of hiring firefighters, giving them good pay, good pension, good benefits, they use prison laborers yeah. to fight wildfires. And then once they're out of prison and they want to apply for a firefighting job, they get denied because they're convicted felons. That's what this country does. Just any opportunity to exploit labor, any opportunity to exploit vulnerable people, I mean, that's part of the reason why we don't have immigration reform. We don't have immigration reform, and it's not being pushed by Republican politicians either, because companies and the agriculture industry exploits them. They're here, they're undocumented, they have no legal recourse, so they can be used and abused by these companies, by these by the agriculture industry. It's disgusting. And it, it is enabled by our politicians. 
it, it is. And if those workers ever complain about the conditions, about not getting paid, about making you know a less than minimum wage, they ship them back. They say, okay, if, if you wanna complain, just know that we'll just send you back and we've got 10 other people waiting right behind you to take this position. And so they do get abused and, and I know we're like, we're so on a different topic right now, but this is important. And that, that is why you're so right. That's why we don't ever actually get immigration reform because the corporations rely on the exploitation of those people to stay afloat. 